Perception is a beautiful thing. Everyone perceives things in their own manner. For example, some people see cars as status symbols. Some of them just see it as a mode of transport. Some use it as an escape and some see it as an investment. Today, I'm driving a piece of art, one that's taken years of work and development, one that's taken inspiration from, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful shapes in the history of motoring. But you and I see cars as machines with life, emotion and beauty. And that's what this planet calls art. Today, I'm going to be driving a piece of work that you can bask in its mere presence and it'll just move your soul. This car has been inspired by one of the most beautiful shapes in car design history. We're in Goa to check out the legendary Rusty Cashews garage and today we're going to talk all about the 356 Speedster replica. Given that a real speedster costs around 4 to 5 crore rupees in the West and that there is not a single 356 in our country, it is fair to assume that this car does not share any bit of technology with the real speedster. Everything from the engine mounts to the chassis to the subframe to the body panels, everything has been made in this garage. But what is this car based on? Well, a good old reliable Honda City Type 2. Let's check out the engine. Just like the real 356, the engine is mounted in the mid-rear. This has the City Type 2 engine which is a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated engine and it is mated to an automatic gearbox. Uh, as you can see, this has a double wishbone suspension with a push rod because this shell is quite a tight and confined space in the rear. So a, a conventional geometry setup would just not work. So now there's a push rod near the wheel that will move the wishbone and will give you the suspension from a much more confined space. The subframe as well has been completely redesigned in order for you to fit the engine as well as the radiator in a slight angle. You've also got a little bit of a vent on the side where the radiator would be able to get the most amount of air. This just proves the amount of work that has gone in to be able to keep this shape and this form because all that was needed in this car was it to look this beautiful and mind you this is just the back let's just go to the front and show you much more work. Open the front clamshell and let me just say that the car completely opened like this looks like an absolute transformer. The fuel filler cap is right in front just like a real 356 and this is the fuel cell so it just comes all the way in here. Let's talk about the front suspension. The same push rod setup is at the front but these shocks as Rusty told us are from pulsers so he's reported them to be a little stiff but again it's a kit car. So. All in all, this car looks absolutely fantastic opened up and it would look at home literally in your hall. The Indian car market is in a pretty peculiar spot right now. You don't want to buy a first-hand car and take that hit of depreciation and you don't want to do the labor of finding a clean second-hand car and then taking it to a workshop and then bringing it back to that perfect showroom condition that you've always wanted. Well, what if I told you that TDH Classifieds has got you covered now? These three cars are our own inventory cars and we've done our due diligence in bringing them to that showroom condition that you've always wanted. So all you've got to do is enjoy the showroom experience that we provide and drive your car off worry-free. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to the driversup.com slash TDH classifieds and get yourself the car of your dreams.
step inside the 356 replica and yes it's still a work in progress but they've got the ergonomics absolutely spot on in terms of period correction because i am sitting absolutely upright my bum is on the floor my legs are absolutely straight and my steering wheel is hitting my knees just like a retro car now you can see all of the chassis reinforcement that has been done on the inside as well and you can see that there is quite a lot that needs to be done still the automatic transmission still does not have a knob and well the door side panels are just panels but again this is not meant to be looking nice and feeling like the real thing what you want to do in this is drive at 30 kilometers an hour with your shades on and enjoying the light that comes inside Speedster was meant to be a cheaper alternative because it was lighter and had less things than the normal 356A. This car does have very little things and it resembles the Speedster fantastically. The windscreen is also super low so if you want to actually hide from the wind, you need to, <laughs> you need to tuck in. and. It is still a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated automatic car so it's not like you're moving very far but it's just that the experience of being in such a car having to do such a thing and having a windscreen that basically is right below your face it's a it's a surreal experience I'm Rusty was like, nah, stop talking. Let me drive. <laughs> Let me drive. It handles decent. It's super stiff though. Yeah, super stiff. It has no roll whatsoever. And the front is really bouncy. I'm just gonna take it through the slower roads so it doesn't make so much noise. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rusty, one minute. Uh, tell me if you can drive slowly for a minute. Yeah, sure, sure. What? Why a 356? Why a Speedster? So, actually, it's because I love the 911, but I wanted to build this myself. I couldn't really get a 911. Um, one sec. Yeah, I couldn't get a 911. So, I thought, okay, build something a little simpler. Because it didn't have a roof, it didn't have uh, windows and stuff like that. I thought, okay, just build uh, build this simple form. And this is basically something I built really as a college kid. So, uh, question from all of the budding enthusiasts. Uh, How did you convince your parents? Oh, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a good one. So, yeah, they always knew I was kind of into this stuff and I thought, okay. Uh, it actually started off as a really simple project. It was just thermocol sheets and nobody thought much of it. But, yeah, it's kind of like, you've got to do something, right, with your free time. And classic cars are kind of my thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, awesome choice of the 356. Thank you. I think, in my opinion, it's one of the best looking cars, best looking shapes ever made in the motoring history. Thank you. And when it comes to a kit car, yeah. now kit cars are uh, rampant in the West. You can see yeah, yeah. companies building kit cars and selling them to people. Yeah, yeah. But in India, we do not have, I mean, this is like a one-off thing. It is. Like where people do not go, like people just don't go out and make their own cars. Yeah. So what has been the response from the community to such a build and how do people respond to this? So the first question is, is it street legal in spite of everyone knowing the answer? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to answer that. But but yeah, that is kind of the thing here. Um, that is the limitation over here. If I had started off with something like a Beetle chassis, like any project car, yeah. okay, it's how, even if you're tuning a, a Laura or something, right? It's as far 
like you change the turbo, you change the wheels, anything, it's illegal. So you're yeah. just looking at how far you are from legal. If I used a VW floor pan, it was much closer to too legal. But yeah, I don't really drive this on the highway or do stuff like that. Yeah. So it's fairly safe. So yeah. I'm loving the kind of reactions that people are giving you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone yeah. just turns around, opens, like looks at the car and just gives gives Rusty a smile. I don't know if they, everyone knows you. Not really, no. Or everyone's just like, oh, right on brother. This is so cool. Yeah. What do you think you're going to be doing with the car next? Like, do you want to upgrade it, make it faster? <laughs> uh, Maybe? Actually not, because uh, there's so much I would have to do to it to get it to where, to where I want it. So I would actually just start fresh, build another car. Uh, I am building other Frankensteins as you guys have seen. Yeah. Like the 1UZ E30. But there's so much I've learned from this that um, it makes more sense to start fresh. This design has got me weak in my knees. It's just so simple, so straightforward, yet so desperately pretty. It starts from a simple sheet of metal in the front, which has grills for namesake, they're, e they're fake. And the wheel arches just have massive bubbles that droop all the way to the rear. With the fly screen, windscreen is as good as non-existent. And the rear end just swoops in out so elegantly that you just cannot get over it. Well, this car was basically designed to be at home at Costa di Amalfi or Bayside Monaco. And as elitist as that sounds, I'm absolutely in love with it. Thank you so much for watching. Do let us know where would you take this 356 replica to pose with. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. It's been your boy Bhavneet. Keep watching The Drivers Up.